so going on from there, Gannon goes inside, I, I think first. I don't want to misquote myself, but I'm pretty sure he ran in first. And I, I had the bag for Petco and all that stuff in my hand. Now, I don't, Which store it, did you guys use? We always go in through the garage if we, okay. typically, if we like park, um, like on the front part of the yard and things like that. Sure. So we go in through the garage. Okay. He goes in through the garage. I go in. I'm getting ready to put up things, stuff like that. And this is where it got. I, 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 I made a mistake. This is it. Okay. So, as we got inside, I heard something, but I didn't think anything about it because I thought, you know, maybe, maybe Dana was like doing something. Maybe we were like doing whatever. Mm -hmm. And the guy was in there. And I gave him the coat. The guy from the... Yeah, it's all my fault. Because I gave him a coat to fix the carpet. Okay. And I shouldn't have. Okay. And he... He was inside. I noticed when I had, like, walked in and saw... I saw our... our we had, like, a little bookshelf uh, thingy. I keep my shapes in there too, but uh, we also have like our guns and stuff. I I saw it was open, but in my mind I thought maybe I left my shapes or whatever. Do you like sunglasses? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't think anything of it when I heard the noise, and I just started walking downstairs. But I didn't walk downstairs with like a gun or anything like that. So I started walking downstairs, and when I walked downstairs, I hear something again. Well, at that point in time, Gannon was on the sofa, and I saw him, and I heard something again, and I walked on around to where the so Gannon's room is here. Okay. And then there's a storage closet here. Okay. And I heard something, and so I walked to the storage closet to open the storage closet. And when I do, it's him. And he was standing in there. He had on gloves. In the storage closet? Yes. Okay. He had one of the guns. Okay. And I was terrified. Okay. So terrified. And then he just knocked me down and, and like, towards Gannon's room. And he was, like, he was hitting on me. It was, like, hard, like, on the ground. Okay. He was trying to like rape me, and I I told her, and she, I said I have to tell you about this, okay. and like I from there on was like in a blur because I was trying so hard because Gannon had a table in his room, and I like I went back and hit my head on it, just like with, with him. Gannon runs inside the room mm -hmm. and like tries to like you know be helpful, do something, whatever. And from there, it was kind of like a blur everything else that was going on because I was just like crying and I was freaking out and I swear to God I don't know what happened from there I really don't know what has happened from there I don't okay I don't and I'm just like in the moment thinking I had like these memories of like wow you know like the thing was open he had the gun and I, I didn't remember what happened from there and so I kind of like blacked out just a little bit and, mm -hmm. and, and and so all these things are going in through my mind as I'm blacked out. I don't know if like I know he was like when Gannon was like trying to get on him. I know he was like moving Gannon and you know like and, and it was just all like so like a cycle to me. Okay, Greg, what do you got? So a couple of things. Let me just bat right out there. She's suddenly very emotional about giving the guy the code, and she wasn't earlier. I mean. Why well, now is she suddenly emotional that she gave her a code? I don't get that part, number one. Number two, she's not, there's no horror as she gets home. No horror at all. No, none, none. There's not horror at this happened. She woke to open the door. She tells a story like nothing else happened. And she talks about what we always do. Chase, I know you'll talk about that instead of what happened. Did he go in first? We, he always goes in first. Okay, boom. She's still got the real answer. She's got hard eye contact. Those spot welded elbows now have turned into T-Rex. So now we're seeing her hands do all this kind of stuff until at one point she gets up and does that dance from the sixties, the swim, you know, the only thing she doesn't do is grab her nose and kind of duck at her knees, but she does that whole thing as she's going through. There's still no horror. This is, it would be funny if it were not for a fact, this is a child has been murdered and this person's tied into it. Now we get to the big illustrators when she gets to facts, she's over the top with these. I wonder if she has read, or heard that Vray says when people move their hands a lot and illustrate a lot, they're telling the truth. When she does that, however, if we pay real close attention, it's when she can talk about a table or something, an object. Not when she's talking about what actually happened. 
where are they when she says this guy was inside? Where's the shot? Where's the big movement? There should be a lot of movement there. Her tears dry after she's talking about the guy being in the closet and all that. Her tears dry as she goes back to talking about the bookshelf. It's just weird. I think these are tears are getting busted. There's also another red flag. If I've got a drawer where I keep guns and stuff, and I come in the house and that door is that drawer is open, I'm probably going right back out the front door if I don't have one on me myself because I'm not getting shot with my own gun. That's not on my list of things to do today. But not her. She just walks on and didn't think anything about it, as she says. There's just so much here. Lots of details, no horror. Uh, and, of course, here's a piece she had to tell you. He had on gloves because there's another deconflict. Why there's no fingerprints from anybody but her in the house. It's just there's so much here. She goes back. I, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, there's a there's a perennial favorite here. I swear to God, I don't know what happened. I swear to God, I don't know what happened. Do we bring up that, you know, swearing to some kind of deity a lot? And again, you might well say, but hang on, I I I, I say that and I and I'm not lying when I'm saying that. And yeah, you 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 may well do that. But here's why in these kinds of situations, why I swear to God is an interesting thing to say. So, uh, first of all, Chase, you'll love this. It's a connection to status. Okay, it's a connection to status that really, in our in in our universe and ideas of of the universe and ideas of you know who by, might be most in charge. When you get to gods, they're like top of the top of the top ranking. Okay, you don't rank a lot higher than that in in my uh, my ideas of how deity structures work. God is at the very top, okay? So there you go. I'm going, look, I'm going to swear to the, the highest possible power that this, that I don't remember this. The other me element here is it's impossible to corroborate that with that God. I mean, most people would say they may have some kind of relationship, but you're not really allowed to go, okay, well, bring that God in and then let's just check that out. It's just not like, number one, it's not really allowed. You're not really allowed to question the gods. That's throughout, you know, most ideas of deities. It's just not done. Uh, and also it's, it's, tough to do you might have your own conversations with all kinds of gods that's that's all right but i don't get to go okay well bring that god in and let's sort it out i mean it, it's ultimately within your psyche within your head within your you know relationship so you can't you can't call somebody out on that so you've got two factors there that kind of socially pressure us into going oh all right then well if you swear to god let's just leave that one uh alone and also the factor is look if you don't remember you know if, if if greg was saying hey tell me about this event and it's a traumatic event and greg says well you know what happened here and i don't know i'm gonna go look greg i just don't know i just don't remember i just don't remember but here's the important thing and i get greg back on track for like here's the important thing here's what i do remember and we've got to get going on this information we've got to get going on this and at, at no point am i going to go look greg i swear to god because it doesn't make any difference me swearing it makes zero difference the reality is even if you know i had some kind of relationship with that god it's not worth bringing that entity into the situation so if you ever hear us say hey you know there's a swearing to god at this point that's a red flag i would suggest that's why we tend to think it's a red flag it's not red flag universally across the whole of life but in these kind of situations here where you would know what you know and would have forgotten what you've forgotten and blacked out where you blacked out you don't have to bring in a deity to 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 substantiate that greg what do you got on this one Oh, you went. Stop. Right. What you got on this one? All right. She is now at the lead of the story. This is what you open up with. Yeah. This is it. Yep. It's been funny and fun and, and all that up to this point. But now she gets here and she starts crying. And she was, can you imagine, can you guys imagine her clearing the house, clearing a room and trusting her to go down with her gun and, and clear it and make sure everything's okay? She doesn't know anything about that. 
You know, she would have taken a gun, whether if that drawer was open, if she were to go forward with that and keep going in, you'd check and make sure none were missing, number two, and you would know what was in there. You'd know each one of those guns. And then you'd say, wonder what's going on downstairs. I hear something downstairs. And you would go prepared for that. You wouldn't just go down there and check it out, man. <laughs> That's crazy talk. You know, you go outside and you call the cops and say, hey, man, I think somebody's in my house. That's what that's what happens then. She opens, she, and when she opens up, this is she's saying this is like saying, uh, or her opening was like saying, a woman's husband loses toe at beach, and in reality, it should have said, man eaten by shark at Myrtle Beach. But no, she waits till now. This is when she gets upset. Three fourths of the way through, she gets all upset. She's try. She starts off by trying to to build rapport with this detective she's still trying to get that thing happening and uh she has more adapters and more uh illustrators than she's had up to this point so far they're not the huge ones they're fairly small but they're there more than any of them a lot of fading facts especially when she says i made a mistake listen for that this time through because she says i made a mistake it, could, it almost goes to nothing there uh then uh she let's see what else is there. You're right, Greg. There's so much in here. Um, I, 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 I can't, I'm trying to go over what Mark went over already. Um, she can't recall the details now. Up to this point, man, she's gone second by second by minute by minute. Now she doesn't remember this. She doesn't remember anything. She's got nothing. She shouldn't have remembered anything the whole time, you know. And I can understand why she wouldn't remember this part, because you remember things in sections. She would be able to remember things in flashes. That's the way your brain works. That's the way the hippocampus collects that information, because there's a lot going on right then. So it doesn't remember that there's no flow. It's just bang, 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 bang. And you, you remember parts of it. And she's remembering nothing but little teeny parts of it. This And you're right, Greg, about the gloves. Come on. This, this is This is... It's it's wonderful. But then she does that hard eye lock at the same time. I'm not seeing any tears. She looks like she wells up a little bit, but there's no no really deep breath, none of that guttural stuff. And and going, she should feel guilt at the, at, about this, whether it's her fault or not, and should just be full of it, of guilt. It should be that low voice coming out of that, those low uh, groans of, of of sadness and grief coming out. But she does that real high thing. Man, this is this is unbuyable. This wouldn't be worth anything if you had to had to buy that. And plus, her feet are pointed right at the door. She wants to get out of there so bad. She wants this to be over. She can hardly stand it. Um, I'll 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 leave it there. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, and Mark, uh, to add on to that, just saying, swear to God, if that was on the behavioral table of elements, it would be a four. You need other things with that in order to get it up to an 11 where we would say deception might be likely. So we're looking for clusters, but as a species, human beings, we've been using nonverbal communication 10 times longer than we have language. And language is relatively new to us. Now, a lot of our understanding about nonverbal behavior occurs in this lower part of the brain called the limbic system. And specifically in this little thing called the amygdala and the hippocampus, and this is referred to sometimes as the mammalian brain because it's responsible for these primal instincts and emotions. So what's fascinating about this is the brain doesn't process language, this part of the brain, at all. It does not understand or comprehend language. It's all about feelings and instinct. So when it picks up on little cues that something is off, like a little shift in body language or something, it gives us a weird feeling. And we call that an intuition or a gut feeling that somebody's just full of crap. So why aren't we consciously aware of it? It can't send us a text message. It can't tell us or explain what it saw. So when you get a gut feeling somebody's lying or being deceptive, that's your limbic system at work. It's picked up on some subtle cues, but those cues have been passed down by our ancestors, these tiny little cues. So instead of breaking this down like normal, I'm going to translate for you. I'm going to translate your limbic system for you of what it's thinking and why you saw this video and felt, wow, that is just disgusting. It's a horrible lie. So the first thing your, your brain seeing, she's folding herself over using the rib cage to protect the soft belly, which is built into mammals. Hesitancy. 
I know your mammalian brain doesn't speak languages, but it detects hesitancy very well in both words and actions. Then there's throat touching. So we're seeing a protective display of the arteries here. Then there's a non-answer in there. Typically, we always do X. Like if I ask somebody, well, what time did you leave the office Wednesday? And they say, well, I usually go straight home at uh, 515. That's not an answer. Then there's a strange drop in tone and volume and an increase in asymmetry. Mark will, Mark could do a 10-hour lecture on this asymmetry idea. Uh, then you're witnessing a human faking emotion and your brain knows it. Your brain knew it in that in that part of your brain. And finally, your brain's picking up on what I call predatory behavior, which it is also hardwired to do. And here's where that picked it up. While she's pretending to cry and our brains can see that, she's locked onto a target. She's ensuring that the information is being conveyed and that essentially the interrogator is buying it. So your limbic system processed all of that to tell you that information. I just uh, was the uh, translator for that. That's all I got. Excellent. And I'm, I'm going to add something to that, Chase, about the fusiform gyrus, the thing that catches all those little things that you're that you see. So I know you probably don't want to get in the minutia of it, but the people watching might be interested. So as you look at something like this or a person like this, the, your, your fusiform gyrus catches all the little movements, the little things they do, all these little facial expressions and, and things that move around in their body. Then the mid-temporal gyrus catches all the bigger moves that you make. It sees cars and things and catches and remembers all that. And it sends all that information back to this little thing in the, in the base of your brain called the locus ceruleus, about as big as a BB. And that starts sorting through all this information. Where have I seen this before? Do I know that person? Have I seen somebody act like this before? What's up with, with all the things in this picture here? What's been going on? And you don't get it right away. That's the gut feeling Chase is talking about. However, there's a difference in a gut feeling, which guys get. And then you have that most powerful, um, almost like ESP stuff in the world. And that's what women get, which is women's intuition or woman's intuition. That's where those come from because women take in a lot more information and they decipher it a lot differently than, than men's brains do. That's a fact. It's not me saying that. It's not some political opinion. That's the truth. That's a fact. We know that from studies. So women get a lot more information. That's why they're dead on most of the time when they say, I don't like that person. And you go, why don't you like that person? They say, I don't know why yet. I don't know. But I, I just don't know. I just don't like him. Or I just don't like her. And then eventually you find out there's, that the person has done something. They're not a good person. Or they're not the type of person you would hang around with. So I know I get worked up about that. But man, it's so potent. What are we going to say, Greg? Well, yeah, last thing is all tied together, Chase, to your point. The limbic system is designed to keep you alive. And those people who have good ones, good ones have survived and reproduced. Those who thought, what? Look at that bear. He looks huggable. Guess what? They're not here. And part of the whole thing is the way our brain finds baselines for what is normal and what is not normal. When we talk about baseline, we're using it as a term of art, the way we operate. But you Every one of you can indicate, can detect baseline in a person because you can tell something has changed. More importantly, you can tell what is baseline in a cluster or a group of people and say, that guy's an outlier. You are instinctively, and Chase, you explained it perfectly, why you can do it. You just need to know that you can do it and that it works and that you should be paying attention. Let me add one last thing to that as we're all having to go on this. Yeah, yeah that's uh, a good I thing. I wouldn't want people to get the wrong idea about this your instinct defaults to the negative, okay? That's it correct. isn't yep. interested in being correct. It's interested in you being safe today, accurate tomorrow. Those times when you find out later on, oh, they were actually a bad person, you remember those. You don't remember the times when you found out they were a good person because that's not useful for you. It's useful to remember the times when your instinct defaulted to the negative yeah, and you were accurate because it's designed to keep you safe. It has no desire for accuracy. Your instinct is not a knowledge machine. It's a best guess machine, and it will best guess towards the negative every time. You'll remember the times when you were right, and you will forget the times when you were wrong, and that's a fact as well. So you've got to watch. Obviously, pay attention to your gut instinct, male or female, when you have no agency, when you have no resources, when you are cut off from the exits, pay attention. But if you have a lot of resource, if you if you know where the exits are, if you've got friends around you, you're, you are quite at liberty to question your instinct because it's very, very often inaccurate and just trying to keep you safe. The eyewitness is you. 
so going on from there, Gannon goes inside, I, I think first. I don't want to misquote myself, but I'm pretty sure he ran in first. And I, I had the bag for Petco and all that stuff in my hand. Now, I don't, Which store it, did you guys use? We always go in through the garage if we, okay. typically, if we like park, um, like on the front part of the yard and things like that. Sure. So we go in through the garage. Okay. He goes in through the garage. I go in. I'm getting ready to put up things, stuff like that. And this is where it got. I, 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 I made a mistake. This is it. Okay. So, as we got inside, I heard something, but I didn't think anything about it because I thought, you know, maybe, maybe Dana was like doing something, maybe we were like doing whatever. Mm -hmm. And the guy was in there, and I gave him the coat. The guy from the yeah, it's all my fault because I gave him our coat to fix the carpet. Okay. And I should have. And he was, just there. He, was, he was inside. I noticed when I had like walked in and saw, I saw our, our we have like a little bookshelf uh, thingy. I keep my shapes in there too, but uh, we also have like our guns and stuff. I, I saw it was open, but in my mind I thought maybe I left my shapes or whatever. Do you like sunglasses? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't think anything of it when I heard the noise. And I just started walking downstairs. But I didn't walk downstairs with like a gun or anything like that. So I started walking downstairs. And when I walked downstairs, I hear something again. Well, at that point in time, Gannon was on the sofa and I saw him. And I heard something again and I walked on around to where the... So Gannon's room is here. Okay. And then there's a storage closet here. Okay. And I heard something. And so I walked to the storage closet to open the storage closet. And when I do, it's him. And he was standing in there. He had on gloves. In the storage closet? Yes. Okay. And he had one of the guns. Okay. And I was terrified. Okay. So terrified. And then he just knocked me down and, and like, towards Gannon's room. And he was, like, he was hitting on me. It was, like, hard, like, on the ground. And okay. he was trying to, like, rape me. And I, I told her. And she, I said, I have to tell you about this. Okay. And, like... I, from there on, was, like, in a blur, because I was trying so hard, because Gannon had a table in his room, and I, like, I went back and hit my head on it, just, like, with, with him. Gannon runs inside the room, mm -hmm. and, like, tries to, like, you know, be helpful, do something, whatever, and from there, it was kind of like a blur, everything else that was going on, because I was just, like, crying, and I was freaking out, and I swear to God, I don't know what happened from there. I really don't know what has happened from there. I don't. Okay. I don't. And I'm just like, in the moment thinking, I had like these memories of like, wow, you know, like the thing was open, he had the gun, and I, I didn't remember what happened from there. And so I kind of like blacked out just a little bit. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and so all these things are going through my mind as I'm blacked out. I don't know if like, I know he was like, when Gannon was like trying to get on him, I know he was like, moving Gannon and you know like and, and it was just all like so like a cycle to me if you like this video get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here